Hello, this is Dread, and in today's video topic, we are going to be doing the obligatory top 5 builds I recommend for the new patch, as I do this every single cycle, so of course we got to do it this cycle as well, because why not? But of late, I've actually kind of had an epiphany. I don't really like recommending builds to other people. Not because I don't want to, but because I just don't like telling other people what to do. So when I talk about these builds, these aren't set in stone. These aren't things that like you should do or you're dumb kind of idea, right? These are just simply five builds that I was planning on cycle starting and I was choosing between them and I managed to make my choice. So think of it less of that and think of it more of five builds I was going to cycle start. And if you trust me and you know me, you'll know that I like actually playing decent builds. So these should be decent builds. So let's go over them all, shall we? And if you haven't already, I would heavily suggest leaving a like on the video and subscribing to the channel as that is the best way of currently supporting me. All right, the first one. This is actually going to be a Forge Guard this time around. Uh, this is for a very specific reason. It's because I don't recommend towards playing Forge Guard at all this cycle. I think Forge Guard is still very bad. But this is not going to stop anyone for the most part. They're all still going to roll Forge Guard. So if you're all still going to roll Forge Guard, well, let me, you know, let me let me whisper in your ear and give you an idea. So in my opinion, I think this build actually got buffed significantly with this patch, with the changes to Forge Guard specifically. Now, the idea of the build is we utilize Shield Throw to cap ourselves on armor and to apply a bunch of bleeds or ignites, like eventually, like I said in the video. And the main reason why this build even works is because the interaction with shield throw and ring of shields where it bounces between the shields when you have the aegis node equipped which means that you know you can actually hit multiple times per shield throw which makes it almost on par with hammer throw it's still a little worse than hammer throw i think but it's definitely on par with it it's a lot better than it used to be especially with aegis right and of course, Ring of Shields also got buffed. This build got buffed to the moon. And like I said before, this build is good despite being a Forge Guard. So my current recommendation is if you want to play some stinky Forge Guard build, like some meme or like minion Forge Guard, I would suggest playing this build, getting some currency or some gear in COF, and then respecking. Because you'll have a much better experience than if you're trying to like just play like manifest weapons or anything like that and then not having a good time with it. At least in my opinion, I had a great time with this build overall. Uh, it took a little bit of uh, difficulty to try to figure out the exacties behind the Aegis math and figure out like what's going on behind the hood when it comes to the shield bouncing. But once you get the hang of it, it, it makes a lot more sense and your uh, ring of shields area becomes like an absolute grinder. Now. I think that this build is great if you're actually going to play Forge Guard, and that's why I'm including it in this list. Otherwise, I would not suggest playing Forge Guard. All right, for the next build that we're going to be talking about, and that's going to be Combustion Ignite Infernal Shade Lich. So the reason why I am suggesting this build specifically is because I just had a really good time with it. I did a bunch of cycle start testing in general, uh, this patch and waiting around for, you know, 1.1. And this was one of the builds that just kind of like stood out to me as one of the builds I had a really good time with, mainly because of the insane multipliers that Infernal Shade has in its tree for Combust. So not only does it have that 200% more at the end of Combust, it also has all of the other more damage modifiers as well, which multiply your ignites to actually do a lot of damage. And of course, you can, you know, use this and scale it into endgame as well so not only was this good for my level 1 to 300 ish corruption experience this should also be really good in the future mainly because the damage should scale through the roof because you're a lich build let's be real right lich has never really had a problem with damage specifically but what's more interesting though is with the addition of seed of ikhidrasil um giving us mana damage taken as uh, uh, damage taken as mana before hp this works really well with lich form specifically as you're going to be down in your endurance threshold you're going to be taking less damage overall so you don't need nearly as much mana to support seed of echidra cell on a lich so i think this helmet is going to actually make this build 
feel significantly tankier and it's definitely an end game option. Now that's going to be great and all, but I think just the build in general, I had a really good time with it. Just the explosions themselves were just so intoxicating of how enjoyable it was to just watch zombie after zombie implode and just see that gigantic explosion on the screen which by the way you can scale to be even bigger than in the video that i show so like i i had a great time with this build that's why i'm suggesting it because it made me feel good it it gave me that dopamine inside my brain you know all right the next build i'm going to be recommending for cycle start is going to be tornado storm bear the main reason i'm recommending this build is because out of all of my cycle start testing this was definitely by far the best build out of that bunch of cycle start testing i did mainly because of the fact that the damage was absolutely through the roof uh turns out uh spamming a bunch of tornadoes and then turning into wear bear to get a massive 80 percent more damage multiplier on your tornadoes and then doing that rinse and repeat turns out that's a lot of damage if you're okay with a little bit of maintenance of mana minus you know with the rotation of dumping your mana turning it to wear bear waiting a little bit and then going back out and then dumping your mana again if you're completely fine with that rotation if you're okay with clicking a few extra buttons every so often you can end up with a tornado build that does absurd amounts of damage and that is like i said mainly because of the fact that when you turn into werebear form you get like a massive like almost 80 percent more lightning damage multiplier for six seconds as long as you're rampaging this has allowed this build to just like just feel so much better like my uh the leveling itself was kind of scuffed because you have to play with totems until like level 40 to 50 and then swap into the lightning bear setup in my opinion i would suggest leveling that way but once you actually get the lightning bear stuff set up it feels great it's just it's just phenomenal the damage is phenomenal and now as well if you don't know uh i'm gonna bring up this item a bunch more by the way uh seed of a kidra cell right the damage taken from mana before hp that does work with rage and that is a really easy way to increase the tankiness of this build as we're going to have um, at the end of the character's lifetime once we actually build the character this is going to be like 800 plus mana with seed of the kidrasil but also another reason why i'm recommending these builds is they're good like what i would call starting points i like introducing people to builds and then having them do their final touches to the build mainly because it's a lot more wholesome that way i like it when you know people come to my twitch and it's like hey dread i took your build and i improved it significantly by doing this and this and this and i'm like that always makes me feel warm inside and that's how i feel about this build i feel like what's going to happen is someone's going to watch this video they're going to play this build push it to a thousand corruption or plus because that's easy by the way for this build because the the damage is there easily uh they're gonna play it and they'll be like hey like I, I played it. It's amazing. And then they're going to show me and I'm going to feel great inside because I know that I managed to send someone the right way in the right direction. But yeah, overall storm bear, really, really stupid build. I love it. The next build I'm going to be recommending is a little interesting as it is the avalanche 1.1 starter that I'm actually going to be playing. It's the one I chose. I don't have too many details on the build itself, mainly because I need to actually play it in 1.1. So this is definitely the most experimental of all the picks on this video as I haven't actually played the build yet, but I think it's going to be insane if we just look at the numbers for Avalanche. The overall build is going to be insane. And as long as you follow the build guide that I posted and then watch me on Twitch or watch for uploads for my updates on the build, right? Uh, you should do just fine. I will be making updates on this build as I'm playing it so that, you know, you guys can follow along and figure out what you're going to be doing with this build specifically. But I think if you follow the planner that I posted, you should do just fine until I get my first or second update going on the build. Um, so the idea is we're utilizing Avalanche. We're dumping a very large amount of rocks on our opponent, and then we're transforming to Spriggan form to cheat the mana system. And then we're going to go out of Spriggan form and do it again. We want to just dump as many rocks as possible and 
As we're dumping these rocks, we get storm stacks, which then can expend, which then give us maelstroms, which then those maelstroms give us more physical damage, which makes our rocks hit even harder. Big rock, man. I, I love the big rock play style. We're going we're, we're gonna to be smacking people with rocks. It's going to be so enjoyable, especially because those rocks actually do insane amounts of damage. If you don't know, Avalanche with the rework, it's going to be doing a lot of damage as each boulder has a 400% added damage effectiveness. And then the large boulder that you get every cast has an 800 percent uh damage effectiveness essentially so we're gonna have a lot of fun with avalanche let me tell you ooh, ooh, there's there's gonna be a lot of things we get to do with this and i definitely this is definitely one of the ones i 100 percent recommend you to play because avalanche is just gonna be that strong next patch all right, so the last recommendation that I'm going to have on this list is going to be actually a sorcerer. Uh, the reason why is because I've actually done a bunch of cycle start testing, like I said, and I ended up accidentally finding probably one of the better leveling specs for mage in general. I think it's definitely on par with Glacier, in my opinion, in terms of damage in the campaign and also just clear and just how good it feels. It takes a little bit of getting used to as it's a very different play style than what you're probably used to early on. But the idea is we're just spamming a bunch of explosive ground uh, volcanic orbs and applying a bunch of ignites. The, the point of this build is to simply give you a sorcerer build to play until you can afford to swap to the mana stacking shenaniganry that's going to be going on next patch because the problem is those builds i don't know if you've noticed they're going to be expensive and merchant skilled and they're going to take a little bit of time to get set up early on especially when you only have like 300 mana but this build can carry you until you get to that point in my opinion in my opinion this was the second best cycle starter that I found while I was working on cycle starters as the the storm bear was better, but this was definitely the second while the lich was like the third. Uh, this one by far just blew me away at how much damage scaling it had early on with the explosive volcanic orbs, how good it felt to play with the uh, combo of teleport and meteor for the 75% fire pin and the massive like 100 mana over three seconds with aftermath after using the teleport feature, right? And then the massive amount of mana you mana regen you can stack to be able to spam volcanic orbs if you watch the footage you can see my mana just going up crazily like i barely have to press focus at all in these in this footage which is great is i don't really like focus in general uh so this this will be great for early on and then you just simply play this and then you swap into whatever sorcerer build you're gonna play that's really the plan now i do think that an in-game version of the explosive ground build is going to be really really good with all the sorcerer stuff it might not be as good as the spark charge shenaniganry that you're going to be seeing but it is still going to be a very solid build and i plan on playing this when i do plan to play a sorcerer like a mana version sorcerer because that will be fun just dumping an absolute like gigantic amount of explosive grounds on Aberrath is going to be entertaining as hell but yeah like i said i suggest you to play this until you swap into a sorcerer build that's that's my current uh recommendations for this build but yeah all right, that's going to be it for the uh, recommendations today. Like you noticed, probably the idea with these builds is to recommend things to start with and to mess around with and to play until you get to a certain point and then start farming for a different build. Not because these builds couldn't handle the end game themselves, but I am a firm believer that I think that most of the joy from last epoch comes from just making your own build. So having a few training wheels early on is great, but after that, I just want to rip them off and just let you guys go because if you get to the end point of all these builds if you get to like you know 300 corruption you have a build that's functional after that your mind can race with all of the possibilities because uh i'm just showing you five builds here but there's hundreds you could try and like sorcerer is complete open ground like there's so many new things to do there's so many new items to test around so uh, like there's just so many things to do that it would be criminal for me to try to shoehorn you and pigeonhole you into specific concepts so these are meant to uh kind of like lift you up into end game and then drop you there and then once you get there who knows what happens after that right you can figure out what you're going to do with the build you can improve the build that i've already made and like make it even better either way whatever you want to do that's up to you. That's really all I mean with this video. Now, with all that being said, this has been Dread. Opt to go do something else. Bye.